show? Oh my God, what a great looking audience. Did you all work out together? Seriously. Mm. Anyhow, sparking creativity, that's what I'm talking about. Um, but I, you know, after listening to John right now, I was kind of like John when I was in high school. I didn't really want to do a whole lot of anything. I love watching TV. There was a great show on, it was called, this is in the 80s, it was called The Love Boat. And I love that show. They've got all these B actors that are actually going on a cruise, and there's going to be shenanigans. So I thought, you know what? I want to run for senior class president so that I can go ahead and have our grad night on a boat. I thought, that would be really cool. So I ran, and I, I didn't win, but it was fun. So I'm having the idea. I had campaigns, um, spatula, vote Rick. Down with demagoguery, vote Rick. Someone goes, what's a demagogue? I don't know. Don't vote for me then. And the last one was, uh, with Rick in the chair, here's three live chickens in your underwear. And that one caught on. And I, I was ready that, you know, I thought I was gonna win. But the night before the election, um, my campaign people, they put up a banner um, on top of the administration building, and I became disqualified. So, anyhow, there was no grand night on a boat that year. Alright, so sparking creativity. Um, John came up with a great idea, and let's see, when are you most likely to have a creative thought? So basically, after getting the idea from John, I had 200 students do a survey, and basically, after reading the survey, um, came up with a synopsis of basically what their ideas were, what they thought makes a creative individual. So, I'm gonna go through these fairly quickly right here. Question number one. Once again, 200 students here at Pali, and I basically distilled the information to present it to you. So, what stimulates or sparks your creativity? So, basically, relaxation, no stress, that sounds good. Um, music, music is very good for sparking creativity. I love music. Uh, quiet environment, I put a star by that. As we go through these six questions, you're gonna see patterns. It's all about patterns. Life is about patterns and cycles. Uh, next one here, quietness. Quiet environment, that's good. Um, an assignment that relates to me, not just academically focused. So, students actually want to have real life experiences to answer problems to. Um, being outdoors in nature, that is a really good one. Sadness sparks creativity. Adele. <laughs> Um, when I'm given an opportunity to create something, of course. Uh, I have my students do a science project every year. I let them pick whatever they want to pick, and the projects they come up with are truly amazing. Um, a calm environment sparks creativity. Sports, creativity. Question number two, what circumstances or environment do you believe promotes creativity? So, an environment with no distractions. Relaxation. Once again, we're talking about calmness. Um, open spaces. Relaxing in a colorful environment. If you've been in my classroom, you know what a colorful environment is. Um, chili pepper lights, good stuff like that. Um, a silent environment. Once again, quietness, silence, calmness. These are all things that are going to promote creativity. Um, relaxing environment. Um, I feel that a quiet, peaceful, meditative place promotes the flow of ideas and creativity. Almost like some sort of sanctuary. Once again, quietness. Uh, when a person is doodling, doodling, creativity. Uh, where, where people don't judge you or make fun of you. Or the answers that you give. Uh, peace and quiet can promote creativity being in an inspirational place. Uh, something where you are comfortable would promote creativity. Uh, question number three, do you consider yourself creative? Yes, everyone has their own different thoughts and ideas, therefore everyone is creative. I truly believe that. No, I don't like to think. <laughs> Touche. Uh, yes, because I'm constantly coming up with new ways to solve problems given to me. Uh, yes, I often find something small and end up with something great and new. 
Sure, I like drawing. Yes, more when they contribute to a discussion, of course. And no, it's easier to not be creative. Glass is half empty. It's sad. Ah, right, question number four. Do you plan to take classes that encourage you, your personal growth and creativity? Yes, good answer. No, school is boring, bad answer. Yes, I like to expand my mind. That's good. Uh, probably not. Why wouldn't you? Yes, if any exist. You know what? They do exist. Uh, let's see. Yes, don't make it. Well, that's very cool. Uh, describe the qualities of what makes a creative person. Uh, concentration, focus, expanding focus. Open-minded, I think a big heart. Um, in order to be creative, you must have an open mind and imagination and spontaneous attitude. Uh, they can usually focus a lot and think very highly. Originality, of course. Uh, curiosity, willingness to experiment, and once again, solitude. So I hope you've seen a theme here, calmness, quietness, solitude, an environment that promotes creativity. Um, able to think of unique ways of doing things. Imagination, inspiration. Uh, last question, number six. What do you think is the best way to stimulate your brain and create more synaptic activity? Your brain is filled with neurons, synaptic activity. That's what it's all about. Huh? Uh, basically, be more have like reflective time. Uh, relating, reading things that you like to life. This clicker's not really working so great. Um, having hands-on activities, read more, be relaxed, sleeping, eating healthy, watch less television. Uh -huh. uh, challenge yourself and challenge the norms. Exercise. Be in an unfamiliar environment with new people. <laughs> this makes me happy. <laughs> be happy. So what is the appropriate environment? The impact of electronic devices. Um, I was speaking with John's father earlier today. Um, I just recently got a smartphone. I was off the grid for the longest time. I didn't even know what an application is. I didn't know that you need to press one and hold your finger on one to check your voicemail. That's extremely ignorant. And then there's all these games on there now, and I could see you know, where it could be slightly addicting. Hmm. <laughs> so the neurology of the brain, synaptic connections. The more things that you do, the more synaptic connections you're going to create. So stimulating the mind, neuroplasticity. They know that the brain changes due to experience. So that's actually a very cool thing. You being here is an experience. <coughs> well, those are synapses. <laughs> uh, the impact of stress on creating, creating uh, raise, raising the effective filter. So for example, if I were to come down and start shouting at you, your effective filter would go up, and you kind of like, what's going on here? So I live in Los Angeles, and you know what? I drive a car. This is, well, actually, let me see if I can show you. This is me on the 405 right there, all right? I'm sitting in traffic. It's not a very, uh, not a very productive place to be creative. And uh, I think it was Leisure Magazine 2011 that said Los Angeles was rated like one of the number one rudest cities in the world, which is like in the nation. I was like, wow. And then this area right here on the 405 and 10, a lot of traffic. So the impact of stress on creativity, the parasympathetic nervous system, you have two different types of nervous systems. You've got the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. Sympathetic nervous system is called fight or flight. So basically, your adrenaline's pumping. Parasympathetic, all you have to do when you're sitting in your car in traffic is take a deep breath in, exhale, and parasympathetic activity. It's just cause you to relax. It's called rest and digest. So it's an easy technique. If you ever feel stressed out, take a breath. And give the other person a break, all right? Famous scientists and their state of mind during creativity. So I picked three. Neil Bohr, Galileo, your friend Mr. Newton. What were they doing when they were creative? All right, so Mr. Bohr, what he was doing, he was actually at a racetrack, relaxing. And then as the horses were going around, he came up with the old idea of the electron and the atom. That's pretty cool, racetrack. Uh, next one right here was your friend Galileo. Basically, he was sitting in a church. He was looking up. 
right here, and he was looking at that and came up with the pendulum to measure time and sat quiet in church. Once again, calmness, quietness, all of that reflective time. Of course, Newton, the famous one, the apple, gravity, I don't need to explain that, but he was in an orchard. So nobody was actually sitting in a classroom during his time when they came up with these creative thoughts. They were actually out in the environment, out in nature, enjoying life. Strange brains and geniuses. Um, I taught a class at UCLA for a little bit, and basically it focused on strange brains and geniuses. And most of the patents and things that occurred, occurred in the early 1900s, and in the 1800s as well. So you had two people right here, you had Thomas Edison and you had Tesla. Um, Edison came up with over a thousand different patents. Tesla came up with about 113 or 112, something like that. And once again, they didn't have the, all the distractions that we have today. It was a different time. They didn't have television. In fact, they came up with electric current, alternating current. I pay my bill, goes to Edison. Oh, I'm going to go back. Or maybe not. I like the, the three inventions that came up, light bulb, of course, phonograph, and the electric engraving pen. You know what that's for? That's for getting tattoos. You can thank him. Half the population has a tattoo. All right, so now we're talking about SPARK, the acronym for SPARK. SPARK, I was told I could not do any pyrotechnics. Well, I apologize for that, because I really wanted to. So, SPARK. So the S in SPARK goes for spontaneity. You've got to be spontaneous. When you're spontaneous, that's when things occur. I mean, if you just want to like start river dancing right now, I would not stop you. <laughs> this, oh my god, passion. You have to have passion in what you're doing. This is my first time ever up on a stage in my life with a microphone. I see I'm like reading the prompter and I'm clicking like crazy, but it's actually kind of fun, it's kind of cool. We're very fortunate to be here at the Palisades Charter High School. They do filming here, Modern Family. Maybe you, I mean, really with art, that's passion. Got to meet my idol, Sir Ed O'Neill. Amazing guy. Very nice. Passion. He had passion. We hugged. Okay, I think that we didn't hug. We hugged in my mind. Adventure. Adventure. This is my trip this summer. I went uh, backpacking up in beautiful Mammoth. This is actually a stream, and up in this area, it almost looks like Switzerland. I mean, it's just so relaxing up there. You have all the time in the world to think about stuff. So, adventure. R. Two years ago, I went to Zion. Zion's beautiful as well. You can, this thing right here, this is called Angel's Landing. What you can do is you can go climb up this right here. But before you go, they have a warning sign. The warning sign says, since 2004, six people have died falling from this cliff. So, that's a risk, but nobody's gonna, you know, you, you just gotta go and you gotta do stuff. So, Angel's Landing is like beautiful. Same thing with the, if you've ever been to Half Dome. Half Dome's extremely amazing as well. Kindness. Whatever you do, it should be involved kindness. Being nice to people, kindness. Your, creative, your creativity should be coming from a place of kindness and definitely not hate. So, SPARK, there's your acronym. And at any age, you can be creative. You look at this right here. These are different, um, uh, let's see, MRIs. And basically, actually, they're PET scans. Excuse me, positron emission tomography. Ooh, I'm so smart. And what they do is, is they ask you a question or they show you a picture and they see which area the brain lights up. So that way they know what each part of the brain does. They all now know that everything is all interconnected. Things are not isolated. So age has nothing to do with it. Now I like this experiment right here. This is like really old school stuff. And I always give it to my students. Um, basically what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to be able to connect these nine dots. Oh, maybe I'm supposed to go here. You're supposed to connect these nine dots. And what you do is with the nine dots, you're supposed to have four strokes and you're supposed to connect all of them. Okay? But it's really hard to do. And the reason for that is because to do it, you have to go outside of the box. So thinking outside of the box is the lesson there. If 
funny thing is, is that now when I give this, people can actually just Google it and then they, they get the response, but I kind of want them to do it on their own. So, hmm, I gotta, I gotta have a unicorn in here, I'm sorry. Um, every, every summer I go up to beautiful Vancouver, Canada. If you've never been to Vancouver, it's amazing. And I go to a coffee shop, and they always have the horoscope out there. And the horoscope, they're usually not that great, but this one right here says, cosmic activity is one of the best areas your astrological chart helps you believe. Um, some people may say that you are being overly optimistic, but that's not how you see it. And how you see it is how you create. So, in case you were wondering, this is where rainbows are stored. Those are hugs. That's magic. In conclusion, um, everybody has the ability to do something very creative. So, make time to explore your talents. And I want to thank you very much for being here. And we've got more amazing presenters to come.